All right, good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock. Um, we will go ahead and get started. So just so you all are aware, I am gonna go ahead and record this presentation. Um, just in case we need others to uh, watch it later if people are unable to attend. Um, a few logistical things before we get started. I did go ahead and shut off video capability for everyone just because I know we've got a number of people uh, on the call today. So wanted to make sure that we had bandwidth um, for everyone to join. So video is turned off, so don't worry about shutting your video off. Um, got you covered there. Additionally, I did go ahead and just mute everybody upon entry to the WebEx. So um, right now you're muted. If you need to come off of mute for some reason to ask a question, um, you should be able to do so just by clicking the little microphone button that's currently got a slash through it on your WebEx. Um, we ask that you only come off mute if you want to ask a question verbally. Um, you may also ask questions in the chat. So um, I'll be monitoring that throughout this presentation. Uh, so for those of you who I've interacted with before, which is probably most of you, uh, my name is Angie Andreessen. I am the business analyst working on the work comp modernization program here at DLI. Um, so recognizing that we are about a week and a half out from go live. I know you all are very busy people and you're working very hard to make sure that you, you and your coworkers are uh, prepared for this go live. So I'm going to keep my comments relatively brief this morning. Um, and leave some time for questions. Um, but just so you all are aware, I know we scheduled this for an hour, but we will keep it short and sweet since I know you all are very busy people. So jumping right into the content here, here's our little agenda for today, what we're going to review. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some major milestones and updates that have occurred uh, since last time that we've all met as a group. I'm gonna talk a little bit about training our new help desk, and then we will open it up for questions. So just jumping right into the campus updates. Uh, so we recently uh, hit code freeze in our system, which is really exciting. That means that we're essentially at the end of our development um, until after go live, which is great. Um, that took a lot of a lot of time and effort from everyone, especially on our user acceptance and data migration teams, just to make sure that everything was uh, kind of in a good place where we could move it towards code freeze. I'm not sure if Brad is on the call, but Brad, I don't know if you have anything else to add about code freeze or if you want to kind of explain what that means any further. Yeah, thank you, Angie. I am on the call. This is uh, Brad Morse, program director for the uh, the project, and. What code freeze is, is that is the point in which, it, I mean, it literally is what it says. It, the code is now frozen, and we've done additional security and, and, uh, and uh, performance testing on that code so that we can ensure the system is stable for go live. So one of the, the things about doing that is you want to ensure your system is stable for go live, but that means if there is some defects found between now and when the system goes live, there's a good chance that they will not be uh, fixed uh, before go live happens because the code, in order to, to refreeze the code, if you will, you have to do additional security testing and additional performance testing on it. And with the time being short, um, we are you know, roughly, you know, it's 1021, we're going live on November 2nd, you know, we're basically a week and a half out. We want to make sure that code is, st is stable and it stays frozen. So that's why if you are seeing defects or something's coming up and you don't know why, uh, one, we want to log them and we will categorize them. But generally speaking, we don't uh, introduce any new uh, code into the code freeze till after go live when we can start doing our fixes. Thanks for that explanation, Brad. Um, so continuing on down the line, um, we have continued our stakeholder engagement. So a lot of you I know have been sitting in on those external answer hours and some of the external training that we've been doing um, with our key stakeholder groups outside of DLI. Um, in addition to that, we've also been sending uh, weekly newsletters to those groups, just kind of outlining uh, what's happening with them or things that they really need to know on day one of campus. Uh, our change leads have been the ones that have been facilitating those answer hours. And they've been doing a great job. Uh, so just to kind of call them out, we've got Dave Horning. He is our change lead for our employer group. 
Melissa Parrish. She is our change lead for our insurers, third party administrators, and trading partner groups. Mike Hill, he's our change lead for the rehab providers. And Richard Davis, who is our change lead for the legal community. So I wanted to uh, make sure everybody was aware of those names just because we realized that a lot of people, while we've been reaching a lot of people through those answer hours, through those newsletters, we realized that there's always going to be some people who maybe didn't get the communication for some reason. So if you all are getting um, any emails or hearing from any stakeholders that they're unaware of those events, please feel free to forward it to the appropriate change lead or to myself or the WCMP mailbox, just so we can make sure that we're including those folks um, when we're doing our communication and outreach. All right, next bullet. So continued training. I'm sure that this is no surprise to any of you. I'm sure a lot of you have been actively involved in training, whether um, actually facilitating training or just receiving training from members of your unit. Um, so the training will continue, I believe, next week as well. So the rest of this week and then next week, and then we'll be all ready for go live on the second. Um, training has been recorded and I, I've got a specific slide to kind of go through all of that, but a lot of our external trainings have been recorded. Uh, so if you all are receiving questions about that from the stakeholders, we do have a place where they can go just to view any of those recordings um, and I can make that available to you all. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about our new help desk and uh, what they can kind of assist with, um, how to contact them um, and when to kind of leverage the help desk to help you. So going right into training, so just a few things that I wanted to mention um, just to kind of make sure that everybody is aware. Internal training at this point is being handled by your unit. So if you have any questions or any issues with training, if you can't access something or you're just not sure what's going on, um, please make sure that you are reaching out to leadership in your unit. So your unit managers and supervisors, they should be able to direct you to the correct people who can help you if it's not them. Um, but internal training is being handled currently by the unit. External training. Um, so external training is also being handled by a number of people in the work comp units. Um, but if you all receive any specific questions, so if you get any emails from stakeholders um, or there are people who are just wondering about different training opportunities, you can um, direct those to the training team. So kind of our leads for that training team are Sandy Barnes from ADR and Virginia Prax and Denise Holmes in CRT. You can also send those questions to either the help desk or the WCMP mailbox, and we can certainly triage those to the correct folks if you don't have Sandy, Virginia, or Denise's information. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that if we're getting questions about external training, um, that people are responded to as quickly as possible so that we can get them that correct information and they can access those training materials. And one last bullet, training recordings for externals will be made available as soon as possible afterwards. So if, if you receive any questions about that, um, or if you even just want to view one of those trainings yourself to get yourself familiar with what externals might be doing, those would be available on our training page. It, it is a bit of a process. It does take WebEx a little bit to generate that recording. Um, I know sometimes it's taken a full day for some of mine, just depending on the length and the number of attendees. As soon as we get those recordings available, um, we do send them over to the communications department and James, Jenny, or Blair puts those up on the website for us. Um, so just so you all are aware, as far as expectations for when those are available, we do make them available as soon as possible but there are a lot of moving parts to getting those training recordings available. So if somebody um, immediately asks you after a training or during a training when those will be available, um, my recommendation would be to let them know that it will likely be two to three business days. It can sometimes be sooner, uh, but we will try and get those, uh, continue to get those available as soon as possible. All right, moving right along to our help desk information. Um, so a number of you are likely already aware of this. So we have established our work comp help desk and it's operational. They're already handling questions. 
Just to review with you all our help desk staff. So we've got Mike Solhide, he's the supervisor of the help desk. We've also got Angela, Carol, and Joanna. So the three of them will be actively taking questions. Um, they already have, I know, been actively taking questions. And just a really uh, quick special thanks to Annie Welch and Gretchen, Nuss Gretchen Nussbaum um, for their continued assistance in getting the help desk established and set up. Now to send something to the help desk, you've got a couple different ways where you can contact the help desk. You can either do that by um, calling the numbers above or you can pass this information to external users as well. You can email them at helpdesk.dli at state.mn.us. So we'll go through a little bit more next week, um, what to expect on day one and where to go with specific um, questions about permissions, or if you think you've seen a bug or something like that once we're in campus. Um, but for the for the time being and, and likely into the future, just make sure that you're utilizing this help desk. You can definitely send them emails. What will happen is depending on the complexity of the question or the complexity of the issue, that help desk staff will just go ahead and kind of triage the item and then get it to the appropriate folks if they're not able to resolve it on their end. The help desk hours are 8 to 4.30, um, but if, if a phone call is taken outside of those hours, so if somebody calls outside of those hours, there is a voicemail box um, where they may leave messages, and then that would also be monitored, and those calls would be responded to. So again, great information for you all to have yourselves, um, great information to share with externals. I know this is something that we have um, really tried to share with them pretty repeatedly in our answer hours so that they're aware of it. Um, and this information is available on the help desk as well. Or on the on the internet as well, I apologize, on our webpage. So that is kind of the end of the content that I had planned for today. Like I said, I know uh, you all are very, very busy people, wanted to make sure to kind of keep the presentation short so that you all had an opportunity to ask questions um, and get back to kind of your preparation and your day-to-day -day work. Um, so right now, I'll just open it up for questions. I don't see anything in the chat, um, so we can hang on for a couple minutes here in case there are any outstanding questions. Additionally, if you have questions outside of this uh, presentation, you can always send those to the WCMP mailbox or even to the help desk and they will be able to escalate those to the correct people. Hey Angie, I have a couple comments um, that hopefully might spark some questions. This is Brad, by the way. The, uh, just wanna let everybody know that, you know, we are a week and a half away. So for the next week and a half, you should really be asking your supervisor or your manager what work you need to focus on. There's a number of activities that need to be completed before go live. Some of that is current state where we need to get stuff cleaned up and some of it is gonna be future state where you need to prepare for the cutover. Uh, we do have a, a meeting with our uh, UAT and our data migration team members next, next Monday to talk about um, what preparation is needed and what um, resources are gonna be required for the cutover. And the cutover is happening over the weekend, so we are gonna have some uh, requests for weekend work from some of the employees. So I know that everybody probably sitting there thinking, well, what are we, what are we gonna do? What, what's gonna happen? I just wanna say, you know, a lot is gonna happen. There's a number of activities that have already been planned and been scheduled. But uh, if you want to reach out to your manager or you have any specific questions, please uh, please ask them now because I do know most of the managers and supervisors are on this call. So please, uh, you know, ask your question because if you have a question, I'm sure others have one as well. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions in the chat quite yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move to this next slide. I believe you all um, have this DLI.WCMP email address, um, but here it is. If you do not, for some reason, 
Um, please feel free to utilize that if you don't have any questions right now. Um, we will be having another one of these quick meetings next week. Um, so if there's any questions that come up throughout the week, you can certainly let us know and we can include those um, to answer to the, to the larger group next week as well. Angie, this is Julie, if I can just yeah. cut in for one second. Um, you know, we're saying this over and over to different groups, and I hope it resonates with this particular group and it's not a sync, but if you are finding defects or have feedback for improvements, those should still be logged. Um, you can rely on your unit UAT person to help you log that defect appropriately. Um, we're urging everyone, please don't keep a list off to the side. Um, if you're experiencing a performance issue or um, if something specifically happens with the screen that you can't recreate, um, let's make sure that we capture the time that it happened and what the transaction was that you were trying to process and work with your UAT person to get that logged right away. Um, sometimes it may just seem quirky for one person, but when we notice it happens to 10 people at the same time, there's actually something then that we can go fix. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great call out, Julie. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I've got a question here. How will training for the various positions in the new system look like while working remotely with new processes and tasks? Um, that's a really good question. I would defer back to your units on that just because units are kind of currently handling the training. Um, my understanding is that all of the trainings that we've been conducting currently have been done via WebEx. Uh, so I would assume that either WebEx or Teams would be the preferred method for those. But as far as specific content, I would recommend just reaching back out to your um, unit leadership for additional details on any continued training that's planned. Any additional questions? As a reminder, I do have you all on mute. So if you need to come off mute to ask a question, that's absolutely fine as well. All right. It looks like um, I don't have anything else in the chat. I'm not hearing anything um, on WebEx. So I'm going to go ahead and end this early just to give you all more time back uh, so that you can continue working on your day to day and preparing for campus. But if there are any questions, um, please, uh, please contact this WCMP mailbox. It looks like I've just got one as I was wrapping up. How will our existing work be crossed over into the new system? Um, I would assume you're talking about like how your workflow would change or how you'll be doing your current tasks in campus. Again, that's something that I would reach out to your unit leadership um, just on business processes. I know there's been some pretty extensive work um, done as far as how business processes will be crossed over. Um, and I see there's follow up, just what would happen to the items in the work queue. Um, I think that kind of depends on the work queue. So some of the work queues will be migrated into campus as tasks. Um, so we would need, just need to verify the specific work queue. If you want to send an email um, specifically about the work queue that you're dealing with, we can certainly research how that data will be migrated into campus or what would happen with those items. It would be a little bit different for each specific work queue. Hey, Angie, this is Julie again. I know that for ADR specifically, um, Nell, I would probably talk to Chris Raymond and maybe I know Mike. Yeah, I was going to say Mike's yeah, the Mike the migration team. I see he answered though. All right, thanks. Great, thank you, Mike. So just if anybody didn't see the chat, um, Mike specifically was talking about ADR um, and he answered just saying your queue will be migrated into your task queue in campus. 
and, and, and Lee, this is Richard. I'll just add the goal is to try to get as much stuff out of the queue before November 2nd as possible. I mean, it seems kind of self explanatory, but I just want to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a great point, Richard. I think that kind of applies for all units. I know Richard is our ADR director, but I think that's a really good point for all units. I think um, we definitely want to try and get that work, those work queues down as much as possible, but we would be migrating um, a number of those uh, items if they're still outstanding. Um, and I believe that if you if you're in the test system, you would be able to see like your task queues and what you could expect to see in them. They are not up to date, up to date. I believe that they were maybe last migrated in September or August, um, but it would just give you an idea of what you would see as a task in campus that would be replacing those items in your queue right now. All right, any other questions? I don't see anything else in the chat. Um, not hearing anything else, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to give you all some time back um, so that you can work on clearing those cues and <laughs> getting yourselves ready for campus. Um, but please feel free to reach out if there are additional questions. Uh, you can send those to the WCMP mailbox uh, we are definitely going to work on getting those answered. We'll escalate them to the correct people if, if necessary. Um, but I want to thank you all for giving us a little bit of time today. And um, as I mentioned, just keep up the good work and we will talk to you all next week. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Angie.